In this lecture, we will explore the ways mental illness is portrayed by the media. In this week's lecture, we will begin with an introduction to mental illness in the media and then cover the impact of such depictions on people with mental illness as well as mental health professionals. The media can and has proven to be a tremendous tool in raising awareness, challenging attitudes and helping to dispel myths about a number of topics. In regards to mental illness, sensationalist journalism and the portrayal of such a topic in new media has led to a widening gap of understanding about mental health issues. The past few decades have made obvious the power the media possesses and its ability to disseminate content with high frequency. Since most consumers place an elevated level of trust in the messages media outlets deliver, they are not inclined to critically evaluate the information they receive. This can be alarming considering the media's accessibility and frequent interaction with consumers. These interactions can lead to subliminal changes in the way the public perceives mental illness. Considerable research has shown that the media, notably electronic media, is the public's most significant source of mental illness information, thus largely contributing to the way society looks at mental illness and people living with mental illness. Studies show that all forms of media provide overwhelmingly dramatic and distorted images of mental illness that emphasize dangerousness, criminality, and unpredictability. When the media consistently sends messages that create negative attitudes towards a group of people, the ramifications can be long-lasting. Such is the case with mental illness. In this lecture, we will explore how the media, specifically televisions, movies, and news media, affect perceptions of mental health. This graph shows the perceived impact of media on the number of people with mental illness and the stigma of mental illness overall. It is a double-edged sword as media has the potential to both increase and decrease the stigma surrounding mental illness. Primetime television is a major medium of transference of mental health knowledge to consumers of media. In the United States, one-fifth of primetime TV programs depict an aspect of mental health. Two to three percent of the characters you see on TV are depicted as mentally ill. Seventy-two percent of these characters with mental illness were depicted as violent. 50% hurt another character in the program and 25% kill a fellow character. What do these numbers tell us? Essentially, mental illness is used as a vehicle for which producers can explain violence and the origin of violent behavior. Research has proven that people with mental illness are no more likely to commit a crime than a person without a mental illness. TV programs perpetuate this stereotype of violence, drawing an unfettered link between mental illness and the capacity to behave violently as well as unproductively. Often, characters with mental illness are alone or isolated in TV programs, creating a stigma that centers personal identification on mental illness, ultimately ignoring intersectional identities one may have. Removing markers of social identity engenders feeling of feelings of inferiority, belittlement, and self-rejection. The negative associations not only strengthen an attitude of disapproval from the public at large, but create a sense of self-stigma. Self-stigma refers to the process whereby an individual with a mental illness will perceive him or herself as an outcast 
and labeling him or herself accordingly. We will now watch a short clip from the movie Psycho. I now recommend that you pause the video and watch the clip using the link before continuing. After watching this movie clip, answer the following question. I am most likely to associate a person with mental illness with... In this scene, a psychiatrist explains the reason that the protagonist, Norman, committed the murders that he did. Alfred Hitchcock's cinematic masterpiece brought upon an entire genre of slasher movies featuring emotionally disturbed and violent killers. By explaining Norman's behavior in terms of modern science and psychology, audiences believe what they hear is reality. Think about your response to the question earlier. How did your perception of those living with mental illness change after watching this movie clip? What emotional response did you feel towards this group of people as a result? What are some myths about mental illness that are being perpetrated through this clip? Part of the broader category of news media, newspapers play a significant role in mental health depiction. Readership is widespread enough to considerably impact people's attitudes and the overall mental illness stigma. Wall, Wood and Richards conducted research on the link between writing on mental illness in newspapers and people's associated attitudes. One of the most common themes in the leading newspapers is reference to mental illness as dangerous. Again, as mentioned in regards to depictions on TV, the media discounts intersectionality when it negatively references mental illness in the article's headline. For example, the New York Times published an article titled History of Schizophrenia, Detail for Man Held in Subway Attack. This inextricably binds violence and crime to someone with a mental illness. Besides references to dangerousness, unpredictability is a leading theme of mental illness in articles. Journalists use words and phrases such as insane, to go bananas, mad, confused, to describe people with mental illness. Only 0.8% of the 600 articles they examined, quoted the individual with mental illness directly, ultimately removing all sense of agency and silencing the mentally ill population. Negative stories far outnumber the presence of positive stories in regards to mental illness. Such a depiction only perpetuates and exaggerates negative attitudes and perceptions of mental health. How do these findings contribute to the overall mental illness stigma? These portrayals model negative reactions to individuals with mental illness. Reactions include, but are not limited, to fear, rejection, derision, and ridicule. The media plays a significant role in promoting stigma, ultimately impairing self-esteem levels, engagement in help-seeking behaviors, adherence to medicinal practices, and the recovery process. The information that people pick up from the media persuades their view of mental illness and treatment. Since the information filtered in people's minds regarding mental health is overwhelmingly negative, rejecting attitudes have become the norm. There is an overall conception of patients with mental illness being more violent less productive and a burden on and danger to society. Stigma does not solely impact those suffering from mental illness, it also impacts mental health professionals. The public views facilitators in a negative light as a result of the inaccurate display of information in the media. Gabbard and Gabbard 
after examining movies' depictions of mental health professionals, developed three negative categories to describe psychotherapists. These categories are the alienist, the quack, and the oracle. Interactions between patients and professionals are characteristically negative, marked by the abuse of power, manipulative and unprofessional behavior, as well as incompetence. Stigma is a negative evaluation of a person as tainted or discredited on the basis of attributes. The media, through its various mediums, perpetuates stigma. Stigma of this kind has the potential to, and often does, lead to implicit bias and discrimination, the inability to recognize mental illness, and the process of othering those with mental illnesses. That being said, media has the capacity to act as a positive agent of change. Heather Stewart argues, the media is an important ally in challenging public prejudices, initiating public debate, and projecting positive human interest stories about people who live with mental illness. In drawing attention in a positive light to issues that are underdeveloped and largely ignored, the media can generate perceptions and attitudes surrounding mental illness that reduce harmful stigmatization and invite fruitful understanding of a person with mental illness as a human being.